My name is Jonathan Reeves from JR Architecture. I'm an architect, but I also specialise in Vectorworks, Cinema 4D and BIM training. Today what I'd like to show you is how easy it is to export your Vectorworks 3D models, BIM or just normal 3D models, into Cinema 4D for even higher end rendering and potentially animation. So here we can see a project that I've been working on for a while, uh, for a new house down in Devon. You can see, I'll give you a little look around, um, see some of the views. So this is 100% Renderworks. So the beauty of Renderworks is the speed, really. I've applied some basic sort of textures, and I've just set up a Heliodon sky, and I've got a little bit of ambient occlusion turned on as well. Now, one of my earlier videos talks about this and uh, setting up some basic lighting here. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and show you how incredibly straightforward it is to get your rendering done in Cinema 4D, which I absolutely love. I'm going to go to File, click Send to Cinema 4D. Basically, it immediately opens up the Cinema 4D dialog with the export options available. So you can see I can choose some different styles from Renderworks that I'd like to open up in Cinema 4D anyway. Let's go for Final Quality. And also, on the organisation side, I have lots of options about the way that I can actually export the model via texture, via class. I'm going to go with the native organisation. Any symbols in Vectorworks will come through as instances. And over on the right hand side, what I'm going to do is basically include everything apart from the planar geometry. That's things like text and dimensions. So let's click export. Let's go ahead. So it will take a second or so to export. I'm going to go and create a brand new project now and show you how easy it is to import that view. Now you'll see it actually imports exactly the same view and all the Vectorworks materials that were applied in Renderworks have come through. Over here on the right hand side, you'll notice that all the geometry of the model is also available. So if I open up the tree for the geometry, all the different aspects, should we say the design layers that made up the model are available. And if I really wanted to, I could modify the visibility of those. Okay, so without further ado, let's go ahead and hit render. So I'll just render up the view without doing anything at all and we'll just see how it comes out. So one of the beauties of Cinema 4D, it's very multi-processor uh, capable. You'll notice if I just put the activity monitor on for a second, basically it's going to be rendering at, let's have a quick look at this, yeah, 500% of my CPUs are being rendered, which isn't bad, seems I'm videoing and recording at the same time. If you've got multiple machines in the office, you can actually spread the rendering across and distribute it very easily using something called Team Render. So essentially it's like having your own render farm. So there we go, 34 seconds for a standard rendering. So what I'm going to now do is turn off the lighting so there's no natural light from the Vectorworks model. And I'm simply going to replace the light from the Vectorworks file with a Cinema 4D physical sky. So physical skies are a really nice way to accurately represent not only the time and location, but also things like cloud conditions. So at the moment it's looking a little bit dark in November. Um, let's crank that up to maybe June, and you'll see that it's starting to get a little bit brighter, July. Also, let's modify the time. So we can go from somewhere like 8 o'clock in the morning, let's go up to, let's do the hour. Can you see every time I change the hour, the sun's moving round. Now we haven't got any shadows on at the moment, but let's go for something like that, 4 o'clock. So, if I hit render again, this time I'm actually going to render it to the picture viewer because I want to show you something. So, I'm going to edit the render settings, go to output, and I'm just going to set it up with a normal sort of video screen size. Let's go for something like, um, yeah, let's go for something like 1080p. So, if I render to the picture viewer this time, you'll see. The image quality is looking really good. The beauty with the picture of you is I can zoom in. Looking a little bit blue, but that's because I did choose quite late in the day, sort of four o'clock in the afternoon. Let's go ahead and render that up. And you can see it's very easy for me to navigate in to lots of presets, so 100%. Uh, let's go for 200% if I want to blow up and look at the detail. Okay, we'll just let that render away. Shouldn't take too much longer. Um, because I went for higher quality, instead of 34 seconds now, probably going to take maybe 
a minute or so. So we might speed this up. Let's kind of let that go. One of the real beauties of Cinema 4D is it's made by Maxon. Parent company is Nemechek. So there's a very close collaboration these days between uh, Vectorworks and Cinema 4D. So if you own the latest release of Vectorworks 2017, not only do you all have Renderworks built in, you'll find that the send a, send a Cinema 4D command is something that's available to everybody. So it makes it really straightforward if you ever want to create better, higher quality renderings for your practice and your Vectorworks users or maybe even SketchUp users, I really recommend using Cinema 4D as an application to model, render, and particularly look at animation as well. We'll get on to animation at some further time. Okie doke, that's almost rendered. It's a funny view because it's a isometric view, a little bit unnatural, so maybe I'll change that to a perspective view. But quality of it is looking nice, particularly these very soft shadows, There's some nice reflections going on. And bearing in mind I haven't really changed the glass or enhanced the materials in any way, um, you know, I've spent a couple of moments, I'm pretty happy. So what I can do is close that window down. Let's now go to edit the render settings again. And what I'm going to now do is add an effect. Global illumination. So the beauty with global illumination is there's a bunch of presets available. And you can see there's some interior presets and some exterior ones. Let's go for exterior physical sky, as I added a physical sky earlier. I think also, let's just hit render, and we'll see what difference this starts to make. So you see now the rendering is essentially rendering in a totally different way, using global illumination pre-pass. So the first step is it'll render a couple of pre-passes before it actually starts to calculate the texturing, lighting of the actual model itself. So we'll just let that wear away. We might speed this up on the final video. Now the be real beauty is, if we wanted to, we could go back to Vectorworks, carry on working on our model, and really, we haven't really got too much of a slowdown. So we can carry on modeling without our computer grinding to a halt. So I can carry on developing the model, make some changes, and if I really wanted to, then when I do send to Cinema 4D again, we get the ability to simply, I'll click export, I won't actually do the update. But basically, if I change the geometry around and modified the roof or put some new uh, landscaping elements in, you'll notice that when it opens up in Cinema 4D again, it will basically either allow me to start a brand new file, or create a new project file, sorry, or update the existing file. Now that's the key. So that means there's a very good connection between Vectorworks and Cinema 4D. It means that essentially you can apply all your materials, your lighting, your texturing if you prefer in Cinema. So when you do the update, it won't replace the materials. It will just bring the new geometry through. Or let's say you've replaced the lighting, as I have, you wouldn't want to bring the lights through and potentially maybe not the cameras as well. So. For me, the two programs kind of work almost like one suite of applications. Let's click OK. We just maximise that screen. OK, so we're nearly done on the rendering. And the reason I'm keen to do this is because one of the lovely features about rendering to the picture viewer is that we can basically go through before and after images. So here's our first one. Here's our second one, which isn't yet finished. But we can start to sort of compare the two. And one particularly nice feature that I like is the ability to set one image as image A, set one as image B, and now you see we get this lovely bar, which we can slide up and down, and we can have a look at the comparison. So you can see with global illumination activated, um, a lot of the blueness has gone. That area where it was in complete shadow has disappeared. It's still in shadow, but we've got a lot more light bouncing around because of the global illumination effect, which we've basically enhanced. Sorry about the emails popping in there. Off we go. So it's a very nice feature, not only its ability to kind of have a look at the two different options here, even while it's still rendering, 
it does allow us quickly to not only store lots of images, but compare them as well. Okay, so we'll turn off that for now. If we enhance it, you'll see we can turn it back on again. It's quite nice as well. Got a few different ways you can look at it. Let's just go for that horizontal one. So we can really see the difference here, particularly in these areas of corner shadow. The ambient occlusion, so without GI, with global illumination, a lot nicer colours, better reflections, and a lot more subtle the shadows. Okay, let's turn off the comparison. So we'll go back onto the temp, and we'll just let that finish up. Again, it's taking a little bit longer now. We're coming on to a few minutes for the render, but then we've got higher resolution and much, much better quality. In the meantime, we could easily go back to Vectorworks, carry on doing a bit more modelling. Haven't really got any slowdown, which is nice. You can see everything is acting more or less as quick as it was before. Maybe a tiny bit of delay, just because the graphics on Cinema 4D are doing their thing. Good, okay, so for those of you who currently use Renderworks, absolutely fantastic, use it as much as you can. When you need the absolute killer visual, it's a real doddle to go to Cinema 4D. The two programs work hand in hand. Personally, I use SketchUp a little bit occasionally as well. Um, I know lots of other practices out there do. Cinema 4D can also import native SketchUp files. So that's another bonus, really. And basically, there's just so many features in Cinema 4D that allow you to kind of do very high-end uh, rendering, the modeling, and for me, the animation. Okay, one of the other beauties of Cinema 4D is the ability to very easily animate all the objects that have come through from Vectorworks. So I'm just going to do a really basic animation to show you how simple this would be. So what we're going to do is we're going to click on the roof and you can see the arrows have come up. So this would enable me to move this up and down. But if I want to record the position of the objects, all I need to do is record the Record Active Objects keyframe button. So you can see the timeline's gone blue now. So what we'll do is we'll slide that across to 90 frames. And if we just start to lift the roof to the position we would like it ultimately to be, and we click record keyframe, there we go. So let's rewind and let's just play through that little animation. So it's really easy to animate the roof flying off. Okay, so let's just take this a little bit further. We'll slide that back to the beginning. We'll select the first floor. And right back on the zero keyframe, I'll click record. You'll notice that because I'm on a different object now, there are no keyframes for this particular object. So we'll record one there, slide through to the 90 frame. Obviously, the roof has now moved up to its final position. Let's pop the first floor up into an intermediate position, and we'll click record again. So now we'll rewind to the beginning, and you can see we've got a lovely animation showing the building uh, pulling apart to explain how the design and the architecture goes together. Obviously you could do it in reverse to show it, uh, it sort of building itself in a way. So that's how simple it is to create an animation. Let's just zoom out a little bit here. Let's rotate it around and let's just click render even in the viewport. So you'll notice even though the picture viewer is rendering in the background, I can still render in the picture viewer as well. So there's no slowdown in terms of uh, me stopping working, I can keep developing the model while hopefully in the background, Cinema 4D, where is it? Here we go. Almost finished. Yes, brilliant. We've finished. So let's just do that comparison one more time. Here we go. We've got before, without global illumination, global illumination and with global illumination. See a lot nicer rendering without much more effort, literally just turning on the effect. Okay, well I hope you've enjoyed this video. Um, it's just really to show how simple it is to export from Vectorworks to Cinema 4D. Um, I really recommend Cinema 4D for any Vectorworks using practice or anyone who uses SketchUp as a, just a wonderful modelling, rendering and animation software. Look forward to seeing you on the next video. Thank you. Bye-bye.